Orpheus by Edward Burrow Brownlow, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Unto the realm of Pluto many roads lead with dark winding from the bright abodes of men, and when life's last detaining thread is cut by Iris and the body dead with charon's coin in palm rests in the tomb or on the pyre the demon of its doom after much pitiful forbearance tears the soul from its environment of cares with promise sweet of love's awaiting kiss of old friends greeting and much holy bliss on shores elysian where all ways are peace and all existence virtue without cease but ere the fields of asphodel are won dire labors manifold must first be done by soul and demon all the past descend to four great streams whose turgid waters blend with suffering souls here flows sad Archeon, on whose black banks impatient spirits run and call to that grim boatman faring o'er his last embarker to the nether shore in silence bent with duty's measured pull certain of all to follow there too full of awful lamentations from lost souls coctus its fierce waves of sorrow rolls, wherein dwells one whose face is only seen. Above the surface, human and serene, below her horrid serpent form and coils, and strings the hapless spirits in her toils. With scorpion venom, Phlegathon rolls by, flaming with waves that hiss and mount on high to lick with burning tongue each crusted shore where not the vilest weed dare clamber or there swim huge salamanders whose desire grows with the maddling tumult of the fire and lastly sticks that pool of pitchy slime whereby the great gods swear their vows sublime in whose black channel hatred finds a home and breeds with furry many a plague-born gnome loathsome to gods and men these rivers run far to the west beyond the sinking sun beyond old ocean's limits past the range of starry travel or where comets strange rush in hot madness there too leith flows where souls must drink to gain the sweet repose of all forgetfulness before the fates lose power to plague them or their bygone states haunt them like ghosts these waters safely crossed the plains beneath thick filled with spirits lost avernus meets the view vast horrid lake at hades entrance who its waters take sicken and die in torture that must rend with endless tooth for such death has no end beyond avernus stands the gate of hell with cerberus to guard its portals well Unto that gate came Orpheus with his lute, Whose most melodious music had made mute. The wailing souls on Acheron's sad shore, And charmed old Charon as he ferried o'er, The son of great Apollo in his quest, For her whom all women he loved best. And as he came fierce, Cerberus stood still, fixed by the magic of the player's skill. On Orpheus went 
and played, for he knew well the wondrous potency of this great spell. Would by a pause be broken, and his fate? never to pass alive the solemn gate he roused the harpies those most fearful things with heads and breasts of women and the wings of birds and talons of the lion fierce whose breath is poison and whose venoms pierce deep in man's soul the hags were planning then foul plots for planting grief in hearts of men he stayed stern nemesis now poised for flight as she in darkness left her mother night the three great judges of the soul now paused in giving sentence for the music caused menios and aeacus and Radamanthus think what change the gods had wrought that at the brink of Tartarus such heavenly sounds should rise to make the heart unleap and to the eyes communicate swift tears of sudden joy had Jupiter grown mad to let this boy this gold-haired stripling with the silver strings enter dark hades with such sound that brings pity to their stern breasts the gorgons stare in vain at orpheus through their viper hair he sings and heeds them not and he alone looks at them eye for eye and not to stone is turned the lemurs that spectral swarm that fill the space of hades without form halt in their wanderings to hear the notes that fall as from a thousand songbirds throats pale death sits sharpening her dart and hears with sad dismay the sound that soothes her ears her arm grows powerless the black dart falls with echoing clang on hades marbled halls the triple sisters who turn mad the mind with envy rage and hatred and make blind the heart with judgment false hear the high strains acknowledge of lost joy o'erwhelms their brains triptolemus stands still with bated breath while on his way to that great hall of death while his stern fellow judges sit aghast still pondering on orpheus now he passed poor marcius whose love of music great lured him to challenge for his after fate the laurel crowned apollo and his lyre wherefore he stayed in the eternal fire but orpheus passing playing so wondrous well that all the flames about him flickered fell and left the wretch in peace to hear once more the power of sound he staked his spirit for black discord in her den of hideous noise grew sudden silent and her breast with joys filled as the gentle tremblings of the lute found subtle ways to reach her resolute strode orpheus on his path and to the right stood sisyphus the stone just at the height of the great mountain ready to roll again into the vale beneath but that sweet strain held it in place so long as it could reach the spot it rested on and to beseech eternal playing sisyphus held high tired arms to jove as orpheus passed him by there to the left ixon ceased to feel the endless revolutions of the wheel 
over the flaming river and the fangs of serpents leave him as he listless hangs listening to such sweet music now the lake whose tempting waters tantalus forsake when his parched lips and maddened hands would take of their cool touch relief hears the new sound and tantalus with sure fit is near drowned for this brief respite and with hungry clutch plucks tender fruits before he could not touch eating in joyous wonder that hell's god gave him such feasting for a period now orpheus passed the black obvious lair of sleep a cave devoid of light or air paved with strange shapes and horrid fantasies inanimate and senseless and they rise as though the cave's dark mouth the music sweet fills to the inmost parts that foul retreat crying for air to breathe and light to see the wondrous worker of such harmony pluto's high throne within the distance looms built of the gold and marble of men's tombs upon a base of bones and by its side stood the pale throne of his beloved bride persephone behind her shadowy seat shone one blue star and at its cloud hid feet glared the red oval of the waning moon that tells sage shepherds of a storm in june when flocks grow restless when the player came nearer to that great place a sudden flame shot from the silent air and blazed as fierce as though a thousand lightning strokes would pierce in one vast sheet of overwhelming fire the daring moral who would thus aspire to reach great plato's love shrine in the blaze millions of serpents writhe but orpheus plays heedless of all nor dares to cease lest he lose the safe conduct of his ministry unharmed he passes through the floods of flame that would arrest his progress and he came unharmed beyond them lo before his eyes a scene of wondrous beauty did arise such as a poet sees when every sense leaves its abode and the intelligence of soul upsurps the functions of the mind when unto every object he grows blind seeing through all beyond for pluto's throne is more magnificent than love might own in higher regions orpheus stood beneath in the lowest step thereof a flowery wreath crowned his bright golden locks the flowers plucked from the dew-fed meadows and fair bowers where he had wandered with his beauteous bride in happy love quests ere that eventide when he was wakened by the short sharp cry calling his name and saw a snake glide by into the thicket when he saw the breast that oft had made his head a pillowy rest marked with the fatal venom which his lips used to the honey that the love bee sips closed on in vain endeavor to remove the sentence of the gods on their sweet love when his strong hands clutched madly the thin air as unto jove he poured his soul's deep prayer for pity when 
with all his blood turned lead he looked and saw eurydice was dead and when gainst all the gods he took that oath sacred to her death's awful bridal troth that by the power of music's magic spell against their will he would go down to hell and rescue his lost love whereat jove laughed and said to bacchus as they gaily quaffed in high carousel let the fool take care pluto can mind his own once in the lair of hades and apollo's son must stay no goats from that black fold can ever stray thus orpheus stood but now no longer mute for to the rich wrought tremblings of his lute he raised his rare heard voice and stilled the word on pluto's lips and then all hades heard persephone persephone give back my lost delight to me by thy great love for thy great lord by each sweet thought for him adored by love that thrills and love that fills thy heart as with a thousand rills of joy break down his frozen breast and lull his vengeful mood to rest till mighty pluto joyfully shall from his very love for thee give back my soul's delight to me eurydice eurydice persephone persephone recall thy lord's great love from thee when in sweet enna's golden meads thou heardst that rustling of the reeds and in thy hands the love-crushed flowers were grass with fear as from earth's bowers he strained thee to his mighty breast and bore thee senseless to the west beyond the opalescent sea that nightly sings its song of thee give back my soul's delight to me eurydice eurydice persephone persephone i bring love's garland unto thee she made it with her loving hands she plaited it in golden bands and placed it on my chosen brow when by my side she sat as now thou sittest by thy great lord's side that night no lover snatched his bride by death seized all remorselessly and took her soul beyond the sea and life became a memory eurydice eurydice persephone persephone let this lute's magic ministry find with love's music sweet and clear thy heart depths though each pearly ear behold how when i strike one string the lone sound floats with cheerless ring behold when double chords are driven with harmony the air is riven so fate plays on our souls and we yield plaints of love or misery give back my soul's delight to me eurydice eurydice persephone persephone by all the joy that lovers see when they first feel the hidden fire burst forth in blaze of heart's desire by all the music lovers hear when language laps against the ear like crystal waves on golden sands by touch of lips and clasp of hands when long zone raiments are made free by all love's sweets that fell to thee give back my soul's delight to me eurydice eurydice persephone persephone mark how thy lord yet frowns on me behold the tightening of his lip kiss kiss his mouth lest there may slip one word of doom to dash my hope bend down on him thine eyes and cope with love that gleams that 
in them shine the while i summon to me mine break break by love and memory the bond of hades set me free her soul that is the soul of me eurydice eurydice persephone persephone clasp him so close he may not see look deep into his soul with love that from thine eyes he shall not move his own ah thus i gazed on her that night and heard no serpent stir for love once thralling all the mind makes all the little senses blind tis well he drinks love's alchemy where in hades thou mayst be come back my love come back to me eurydice eurydice persephone persephone lull him with love that unto me no thought may leap with sudden ire and steal again my heart's desire when she shall come ye gods that light it shone when on that fatal night the demons took her from my side tis she they bring her back my bride let pluto wake let jove decree myself my soul come back to me my joy in life and death to be eurydice eurydice persephone persephone a moment more and we are free i feel the breath of outer air i see the upper stars so fair i hear the lapping of salt waves i see the light of day that saves i feel the pulsing heart throbs run through her fair limbs i watch the sun uprising in her eyes and see its living light thrills into me she has come back come back to me eurydice eurydice end of poem this recording is in the public domain dead summer by edward borough brownlow recorded for LibriVox.org by june the lord and lover of the year is slain fair summer nature's joy and earth's sweet pride the wind mourns sadly as a mournful bride loading the air with monodies of pain down from the branches rustle light as rain the rarely coloured leaves afar and wide blight stricken blossoms strew the countryside no more to deck it with delight again the bright-winged choristers that carol round sweet overflowings of supernal joy no more their thrilling ecstasies employ to glad man's soul with music's purest sound summer lies dead upon the lap of earth pale melancholy weeps where late lack mirth end of poem this recording is in the public domain autumn by edward borough brownlow recorded for LibriVox.org by jude when autumn like a prophet filled with fears warns summer's golden beauty of that death which soon the chilling blast of winter's breath shall bring fond nature by her falling tears attests her grief unchanged through all the years and from the blossoms that lie dead beneath seizing the unseen colours weaves a wreath and lo a garland on each tree appears so when to thee life's end is drawing near and weeping kinsmen kneel about thy bed may all the rays of goodness thou hast shed from out the buried past shrine 
bright and clear, And golden deeds, and thoughts of heavenly hues, Over thy fading mind soft light diffuse. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Skylark by Edward Burrow Brownlow Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Blithe is the lark when first the morning breaks, And from his nest upcircling through the air, He leaves below a world of shadowy care, And off his wings the dew of darkness shakes, for those high lakes of blue he gladly makes, With song that overfloweth everywhere, Like the sweet grace that falleth after prayer, To one who from sin's sleep at last awakes, Poets have sung thy praises, but thy song Is far above all sound of poet's voice. Though listening to thy notes he may rejoice, And wonder if some raptured angel throng Pause in thy service as thou soarest near, And to thy music lend entranced ear. End of poem. This reading is in the public domain. Constancy by Edward Burrow Brownlow Read for LibriVox.org By Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. I did not ask thy love, nor tell mine own, When others sought thee in thy sovereign days, For my sad heart, beholding the bright blaze, Of thy great beauty, seemed to turn to stone, And on my lips, that now have bolder grown, No word would form to utter thy high praise. So stricken was I in love's conquering ways, That my poor soul consumed its love alone. Vindictive time now veils thy queen-like charms, To thy old champions, and they quickly leave. As grim misfortune comes to cross their arms, And pluck thy colors from each coward sleeve. All fly the tilt-yard, now to fate's alarms. I fling my gauge at last, wilt thou believe? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Ballad of the Street by Edward Burrow Brownlow Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. High clamor of rooks o'er a meadow of clover That make for their haunts at the break of the day Low babble of brooks where the rain-spotted plover Paddles at noon through the sandbanks gray Gold-banded bees on their murmuring way To the honey-filled blossoms that yield their sweet, These are the visions that round us play, As we steer through the turbulent throng of the street. Slow pacing of herds and the song of the drover, A score of clean sails in a Kentish bay, With a glimpse of the castle and cliffs of Dover, and the girdle of sea that shall gleam alway. Far off in the fields where they make the hay, Darby and Dorothy manage to meet, And kiss for a moment, alack, a day, As we steer through the turbulent throng of the street. Across the wide world love is ever a rover, In palace or cot not content to stay. Soon the pastoral play of our youth is over, with its spangles of hope and its fine array. June stifles the flowers that are born in May, 
and their beauties the autumn shall not repeat our fancies the fates try to strangle and slay as we steer through the turbulent throng of the street let us heed not the passers or what they say while love in our hearts finds a safe retreat for souls can reach heaven though feet may stray as they steer through the turbulent throng of the street end of poem this recording is in the public domain pantome the blush by edward burrow brownlow read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c within my heart there fell a hush i thought my very soul had died when first i saw my lady blush and own the love she strove to hide i thought my very soul had died before affection bade her speak and own the love she strove to hide with silent ways and manners meek before affection bade her speak i watched her as she used to go with silent ways and manners meek whilst i with love was all aglow i watched her as she used to go to gather simple blossoms fair whilst i with love was all aglow yet dared not lay my passion bare to gather simple blossoms fair i often went to give to her yet dared not lay my passion bare though all my soul with love did stir i often went to give to her my life if she would deign to take though all my soul with love did stir my lips their silence dared not break my life if she would deign to take twas hers not mine yet strange to tell my lips their silence dared not break ere she had learned love's sacred spell twas hers not mine yet strange to tell moons waxed and waned and years flew by ere she had learned love's sacred spell by touch of hand and glance of eye moons waxed and waned and years flew by i thought she loved alas not me by touch of hand and glance of eye the truth was told ah ecstasy i thought she loved alas not me within my heart there fell a hush the truth was told ah ecstasy when first i saw my lady blush end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Rondau by Edward Burrow Bronlau, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. First find your refrain, then build as you go, with delicate touch, neither heavy nor slow, but dainty and light as a gossamer thread, or the fleecy white cloud that is breaking o'erhead or the sea-foam that curls in the soft evening glow and your rhyme must be swinging not all in a row but as waves on the sands in fine ebb and quick flow yet of rules for a rondeau i hold this the head first find your refrain for the subject there's nothing above or below that a poet can learn or a critic may know but a rondo will hold a rhyme ring that will wed the thought to the thing yet whatever is said will ne'er be a rondo till you with one blow first find your refrain end of poem this recording is in the public domain winter by edward burrow Brownlow, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Winter's blast is coldly sweeping 
o'er the pallid face of earth all the merry elves are sleeping wearied out with last year's mirth dismal spirits doomed to wander never resting anywhere chase the sparkling crystals yonder through the chill and cheerless air where the birds sang in the branches not a sound is heard at all snowy flakes in avalanches flutter down with silent fall where the grasses nurse the flowers not a sign of life is seen and the frost has turned the showers into sheets of icy sheen all the air is sadly sighing all the trees with sorrows ring all is dying 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 winter go come back o spring end of poem this recording is in the public domain Purpose by Edward Burrow Blownlow, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Brother, a week from thy long lethargy, walk forth into the world, search out the task that is allotted thee, tear off the mask of morbid thought that ever blindeth thee god hath appointed each good man to be his warrior in the righteous fray then ask his benison and dawning sword and cask march forth to meet the common enemy each good deed done shall be a death blow given unto a sin conceived each true word said shall be a javelin that hath not sped in vain its forth thus come direct from heaven waste not the time man's inmost spirit saith life without purpose is a lingering death end of poem this recording is in the public domain sonnet by edward burrow brownlow Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Year after year I see the trees unfold, Their baby leaves to the maturing sun, Then tender birth of blossoms, one by one, From parent stems that still their nurture hold. Later the tall green corn takes on its gold, crowned with the glory of a purpose done and last the sands of beauty being run all things decline into the common mold age after age whirls on the appointed round of mortal destiny old thoughts take bloom and new minds battle in the time-worn strife death's winter nips before the task is crowned and soon or late within oblivion's tomb men fall like leaves from god's great tree of life end of poem this recording is in the public domain a roman girl's prayer by edward burrow brownlow Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. On thy grassy altar, dear, pour I out the two-year wine, And the incense rises clear from thy holy shrine. Lend me, Venus, both thine ears, let me whisper unto thee All the hopes and all the fears raging now in me he whom i have loved so well for whose love my soul hath burned yields to chloe's fatal spell and my vows hath spurned on her beauty now his eyes beam as once they beamed on mine broken are the solemn ties made beneath the vine 
It cannot be that he is born, all my joy to turn to grief. For if he do prove forsworn, death is my relief. Mother Venus, look with smiles, lest I lose this joy of love. Lend me all thy wit and wiles, his cold heart to move. Bless this philtre I prepare from the swift and sweet vervain. Mother Venus, hear my prayer. Lead him back again. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Ballad of Boccaccio by Edward Burrow Brownlow Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. The length of each day to make short, Add friendship to bind by a chain. Our queen was appointed to reign In the realm of a leafy resort. Strong laws did her ruling support, if need were her wish to maintain, though none could love's presence profane, when Philomel governed the court. How fine did our gallants disport with ladies who followed the train, whilst wisdom enlightened each brain in the wit of each ready retort. Ah, those were the days of fair sport. The world ne'er will witness again for honor her rights did retain when philomel governed the court what stories our souls did transport o'er the beauties of fancy's domain and their morals and meanings were plain though your critics now try to distort when beauty and truth do consort hypocrisy preacheth in vain and scandal and slander were slain when philomel governed the court ye moderns who fight might and main for mammon believe this report men lived in their castles in spain when philomel governed the court end of poem this recording is in the public domain Release by Edward Burrow Brownlow. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. He fears to die who knows not how to live. For death is friendly, shaping to an end. The woeful accidents which faith doth blend with high success to fairer fortunes give who for this close would ask alternative unto a further lease of earth to lend his soul and clip the wings that would ascend to god the source of life infinitive look at the parable of things the sun must some day out the fairest blossoms die sweet-throated songsters cease their ministrally and nature endeth all she hath begun. So fear ye not to meet the great release, for dire storms dissolve in lasting peace. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Whip Poor Will by Edward Burrow Brownlow Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. When early shades of evening's close, the air with solemn darkness fill, before the moonlight softly throws its fairy mantle o'er the hill, a sad sound goes in plaintive thrill. Who hears it knows the whip poor will. The nightingale unto the rose, Its tale of love may fondly trill. No love tale this, tis grief that flows, With pain that never can be still. The sad sound goes 
in plaintive thrill who hears it knows the whip poor will repeated oft it never grows familiar but is sadder still as though a spirit sought repose from some pursuing endless ill the sad sound goes in plaintive thrill who hears it knows the whip poor will end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Death of the Laurelette by Edward Burrow Brownlow Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Weep, England, weep, if thou hast tears to shed. Thy master's son of song has passed away. The author of thy poets far has sped as the long toiling light fades out of day into an unseen land no later lay to cheer thy heart and make thy soul more strong shall sound within thy walls of sea girt gray from the rare voice of him who gave so long the noblest numbers of new english song Around the world the echoes of that song Swiftly rebound all English hearts to fill, And o'er each peak of empire speed along, In roseate splendor as the sudden thrill Of sunrise tips with beauty each new hill, From east and west the glory of his fame, Rolls back to Albion's shores, and ever will for east and west can show no poet's name more true and pure more free from blot and shame he died in dear old england in the land where chaucer first sang tales of jovial cheer where spencer chanted forth his paeans grand and shakespeare left a word supreme and clear where Milton bade the epic reappear, and Wordsworth later gained a deathless name. With these great five, this memorable year has yielded Tennyson for future fame, the sixth true English poet to acclaim. The moon streamed through the lattice where he lay, in that last struggle of the living powers and round his brow her glory gan to play, as when he wooed her in sweet English bowers, midst silent birds and open-hearted flowers, till scenes of old-time beauty through his brain, before him passed, thus kindly death endowers, the last sad moments lulling them from pain and memory brings her sweetest stores again end of poem this recording is in the public domain the sonnet by edward burrow brownlow read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c the sonnet is a diamond flashing round from every faucet true rare colored lights a gem of thought carved in poetic nights to grace the brow of art by fancy crowned a miniature of soul wherein are found marvels of beauty and replacent sights a drop of blood with which a lover writes his heart sad epitaph in its own bound a pearl gained from dark waters when the deep rocked in its frenzied passion the last note heard from a heaven saluting skylark's throat a cascade small flung in a canyon steep with crystal music at this shrine of song high priests of poesy have worshipped long end of poem 
This recording is in the public domain. The Poet by Edward Burrow Brownlow Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Men call him mad because he weaves The glory of the golden corn And paints the beauty of the sheaves They gather night and morn They laugh when he, in rhapsody, With eye uplift and soul serene, translates the wonders of the sky which they have dimly seen or if he pluck a wayside flower and tell them of its beauty rare they smile not knowing god's great power is manifested there or if when tempests rule the sky he walk and talk with wind and rain they call his soul's great ecstasy a sickness of the brain he walks unrecognized of men for sense may not discern the soul the morals wonders of his pen their sympathies control along the battlefield of life content to lose if others gain he lifts no finger in the strife yet feels its bitter pain he wanders through the crowded street or lingers by the countryside for all things good his heart doth beat with love that is worldwide the troubles of his fellow men his shrines with pity in heart and prays the time to hasten when all sorrow shall depart and when the kindly voice of death proclaims life's journey duly trod he blesses all with parting breath and leaves the rest to god end of poem this recording is in the public domain in bosha by edward burrow brownlow read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c vine tendrils drooping in the midday sun take me to greece ere sappho sang those lays whose echoes falling down this length of days trance us with beauty sweet and halcyon satyrs green garland skip madly on through woody wilds loud shouts of ribald praise mingle with merry laughter and amaze the peaceful shepherds who affrighted run fair dryads swell the riot filling song from every tree trunk and from every pure spring sweet neighed voices rise with silvery ring to welcome him who leads the dancing throng old bacchus reeling neath the weight of wine chanting a stave half drunken half divine end of poem this recording is in the public domain loveland by edward burrow brownlow read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c ah uh, jenny though life is not over yet the sweetness of living is past no longer we walk through the clover and watch the white clouds sailing fast for a darkness has newly arisen to spread and to spoil our fair sky all our days must be spent in a prison and the black cloud shall never pass by ah jenny though bright the scales glitter in the midst of the coil lurks a fang the fruit of the almond is bitter though blossoms are fair while they hang the rose has a canker within it and some day the lark will not sing the year that flew by as a minute 
shall bear heavy on love's broken wing ah jenny our playbook lies broken behind us before is the page hermetic and so for a token to charm away grief in our age remember the words of creation our let there be love when love's fire through our lips like a sacred libation drenched our souls with the wine of desire ah jenny we journeyed together life's road for a year and a day bright summer has been all our weather fair blossoms have strewn all our way and shall we now part at the corner of the crossroads and meet never more because the world leers like a scorner and mocks when we pass by its door ah jenny the hand that i gave you that night when i promised to keep your heart lo i stretch out to save you and to save my own soul from hell's deep let the world say its worst we shall never hear its voice or see aught of its gloom for in loveland the birds sing forever and the roses are always in bloom end of poem this recording is in the public domain the legends and lilies of france by edward burrow brownlow read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Sat and soft is the dirge on the Gaelic shore, by the mournful moan of the ocean made, for the days and the deeds that are now no more, ere the last of the nights in his tomb was laid, in the depth of an old cathedral shade, above are his cask, shield, banner and lance with the sword that had struck him the accolade but dead are the legends and lilies of france did he pine for the powder and polished floor gay dances bright glances of masquerade when he parlayed of politics was it not or the lighting blue gleam of his damascane blade if he sang, was it not of an old crusade? If he listened and laughed at a love romance, would he rather not look at a carronade? But dead are the legends and lilies of France. If his lady's fair favor he sought to implore, by a witty ballad or a sad serenade, did he write it? Not he, when a troubled door was willing to sing all the day if paid in a bower of bloom or a vine arcade or to sigh all night in a moonbeam's dance while he dreamed of rampart and escalade but dead are the legends and lilies of france the cathedral still stands with its fine facade some old stones of the rampart remain by chance there are diplomats, dances, and gasconade, but the dead are the legends and lilies of France. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Hawthorne Spray by Edward Burrow Brownlow. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. After the early spring's dissolving powers had eased the earth of winter's icy weight, I went into the woods with soul elate to watch the coming of the first-born flowers. Fair Flora soon began to build her bowers of leaf and bloom in forms both small and great. The trees put forth their canopies of state and from the ground sprang up between the hours most beauteous blossoms in a glorious band of perfect shapes and colors 
richly blent and of my soul i was filled with glad content but one pink hawthorn in a far-off land sent all my thoughts like birds on eager wing back to the beauty of old england's spring end of poem this recording is in the public domain if i were king by edward burrow brownlow read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c if i were king of some great land with lords and commons to command my crown should be with justice bright instead of jewels and love's light should be the sceptre in my hand one law of virtue should be planned that all alike might understand the simple rule that right is right if i were king one church should stand in god's own sight where all who wish to worship might its ministers should be a band of soldiers with a purpose grand to put all evil thoughts to flight if i were king End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. World, Wind, Leaves, and Snow by Edward Burrow Brownlow Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. World, Grey Wind of the North, With thy burden so chill, Oh, for the blast and the blowing! Why fliest thou fast over river and rill, Adown the deep valley and up the steep hill? Alas, for the storms that are sowing! Through gloom-spreading forest, bare meadows, bleak moor, Above the sea surges, along the seashore, Oh, whither, grey wind, art thou going? Wind! the corpse of my lover my arms do enfold oh for the roar and the rattle whose beauty was rarer and fairer than gold whose joys were bright jewels unbought and unsold alas for the fear-stricken cattle and i chant in thine ear the sad dirge of the dead for the summer is slain and the winter so dread is hasting to offer thee battle world sere leaves of the autumn replendescent and bright oh for the frost and the fading why fall ye so thickly by day and by night with raining of color that dazzles the sight alas for the winter's invading till heaped on my bosom like relics of love ye lie sad remembrances sorrow to move my spirit with woe overlading leaves we thought to have woven a garment of grace oh for the moon and the veiling embroidered with beauties bright fancy should trace but alas we have gazed on his death-stricken face alas for the heavens are paling and the robe of our fancy is changed to a pall and the garlands that lately did crown him must fall love's labor is all unveiling world pale snow with a touch that is light as the air oh for sky's cloud and earth's cover why waitest thou down on my heart filled with care on my soul with its anguish too heavy to bear alas for the end when tis over in thy mantle of gauze why hiddest thou mine eyes that would look at fond love er for ever love lies in the grave of my newly slain lover snow i cover thy face lest the sight of thy dead Oh, 
for love sacred and splendid should strike in thy soul its innameable dread for sympathy now and for ever is fled alas for lost love undefended and i wrap up thy breast with the warmth of my heart which shall stay till the spring breaks and bids me depart when the time of thy mourning is ended end of poem this recording is in the public domain rose by edward burrow brownlow read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c know you whence the roses came roses are the queen of flowers rose is my beloved's name all my heart was set aflame as we walked through cupid's bowers know you whence the roses came is it sweetness is it shame when the sunshine spoiled by showers rose is my beloved's name duty sits a stern old dame on a throne of ruined towers know you whence the roses came youth must live and who shall blame if with love it pass the hours rose is my beloved's name life and love is all a game shine and shadow gleams and glowers know you whence the roses came rose is my beloved's name end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Sea Dream by Edward Burrow Brownlow Read for LibriVox.org by Alan H. Staples July 26, 2017 In the United States of America My spirit wandered by the ocean shore Proud Argosies sailed out to Albion's isle Deep laden with a new world's golden store The sun-kissed waves danced lightly Nature's smile suffused o'er all the scene Sweet loveliness a while Light silver veils like tender thoughts outspread, when dreaming lovers taste supernal joy, floated around heaven's azure bridal bed. In listless splendor, others did convoy earth's treasures o'er the deep that plotted to destroy. There rose, as from the sea, a strange mirage out of the past, the clouds like floating drapes each moment changed, and ocean's long rivage was wreathed by magic in a thousand shapes, now gemmed with flashing isles now girt with solemn capes. And all the cities that have loved the sea, to their destruction passed along the sky, and I beheld them, as the drowning sea, in that last moment when they sink to die, all life's forgotten scenes, unrolled by memory. Time-honored Greece, whose fingers clutched the wave and clasped it to a heart that beats no more, sank with her wisdom in a silent grave, leaving her sons a splendor to deplore, while moans the tideless sea around each classic shore. Rich Carthage, whose swift keels swam round the world, Phoenicia's loveliest daughter, her fair hand, was fought for by the nations. Fate hath hurled her and her glory from their sea throne grand, buried like old palm beneath the burning sand. Great Venice stood amid the nuptials gay, Blessing as bride the fair but fickle sea. But all her pride and pomp have passed away. Dukes, doge, ships, senate, riches, sovereignty, that once compelled the world to fall on bended knee. Imperial Rome, set like a lustrous gem within seven guardian jewels. Tyrant time stole from her thoughtful brow its diadem, and the three wreaths that crowned her all sublime stained though their golden leaves with many a bloody crime proud spain once mistress of the sea before the fool ambition led her ships in vain against the bulwarks of old england's shore when god smote down her pride upon the main and sank her power so low it never rose again then fell a mist before my wondering sight over the past and slowly there arose our blessed britain in her glorious might the awe and admiration of her foes 
whose land of liberty protecting seas enclose. The diamond of nations set in gold, flashing with truth that sparkles o'er the earth. Compared to her, what empery of old hath wrought for suffering man such deeds of worth, or filled with living light dark lands of ageless earth? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Black Knight by Edward Burrow Brownlow, read for LibriVox.org by Alan H. Staples, July 26, 2017, in the United States of America. To King Banalin's court there came, from divers lands beyond the sea, a score of knights with hearts aflame, with love for Lady Ursuli, whose wondrous beauty and air fame were sung by Europe's minstrelsy. Each lord in retinue did bring a noble and a princely band, whose deeds the troubadours did sing through length and breadth of Christian land, and each by turn besought the king the favor of his daughter's hand. But spake the king to each brave lord, When first the sun shall shine in May, attorney in the place-yard, we do appoint, and on that day, who holds his own with spear and sword, shall take our daughter fair away. Whereat the Lady Ursuli, blanched as a lily of the vale, for many moons had waned since she first pledged her love to Sir Verrell, and for that sick to death was he, her trembling lips turned ashen pale. The heavy scent of musk and myrrh hung all about the inner room. Dim taper lights did faintly stir, to life the arras through the gloom. She bade her handmaid bring to her the treasure box that held her doom. With lightest touch a secret spring upraised the silver casket's lid. She took therefrom a golden ring, a broken coin, a heart hair thrid, and many a sweet and precious thing, wherein her plighted troth was hid. Then welcome death, if death it prove, she said, and kissed with lips still pale each sweet remembrance of his love. I will not fail thee, Sir Verail, though from thy couch thou canst not move to don for me thy coat of mail. Unto the chapel straight she went, and knelt before the altar-stone, her face within her hands as she bent, praying with many a tear and moan, until the day was well nigh spent, when came a beadsman she had known. O oh, Father, join thy prayer with mine, the life of Sir Varel to save. O oh, plead then at Our Lady's shrine, for health to one so young and brave. For I will wed, with help divine, no other lord this side the grave. The holy friar knelt him there and crossed him, and began to tell his beads each counted for a prayer until the sound of vesper bell stole through the darkling twilight air, and warned them of the day's farewell. His beads each counted for a prayer, until the sound of vesper bell stole through the darkling twilight, and warned them of the day's farewell. Each day, at morn and noon and night, her trusted handmaid she did send, to learn if her beloved knight in life's estate was like to mend, and on the eve of April's flight this message came her heart to rend. Tell thou, my lady fair, he said, to her who bore the answer back, Tomorrow will I leave this bed, and wear my suit of armor black. Tomorrow will I win the wed, or lose both life and life alack. The lady Ursuli knew well, he could not rise so ill was he, and shuddered as her maid did tell his dying state. Then forth did pass unto the chapel as the bell proclaimed the holy evening mass. The morrow broke with golden rush, and chased the gloom of the night away. The pipe of blackbird, song of thrush, rose with the skylark's roundelay. The wild flowers started with a blush to meet the first bright morn of May. The place yard was all prepared, bright hued pavilions stood around, the banners waved, the armor glared, the eager steeds tore up the ground and twenty princes who had dared the tourney in the lists were found. The king and queen on day's throne received each knight on bended knee, but like an image carved in stone sat lovely Lady Ursuli, and none who saw her would have known, for the tourney was to be. But one there knelt in sable mail, of whom the king in accents rude did ask his name and why this bale of armor black he did intrude. He answered, I am Sir Varel, 
Long months thy daughter have I wooed, and by this sable suit I wear, this sterling blade of Spanish steel, this iron shield and trusty spear. But chiefly by the love I feel, I ask to wife thy daughter fair, and that, proud king, is why I kneel. When Lady Ursuli that voice did hear, her heart beat high with fears, her troubled soul did half rejoice, and memory filled her eyes with tears. But as she smiled upon her choice, there fell a clash of shield and spears. Night after night was overthrown, some ready for the bier and shroud, at last the black knight stood alone. And in the air applause rang loud, as proudly strode he to the throne, pursued by all the noble crown. Then cried the king, Right nobly won, most puissant, worthy Sir Varale, I would the words be well undone, that erst in anger I did rail. The knight replied, Words injure none, and after grief doth not avail. And now, O king, thou soon shalt wis thy daughter is forever mine, and when thy loving liegemen miss, both thee and all thou callest thine, they shall recall the black knight's kiss, and know that love hath power divine. Then at the Lady Ursuli the black knight looked, and she arose. But what strange visage she did see, that his raised visor did disclose, is still an awful mystery, which only that dead lady knows. For when her eyes of luster rare gazed there, where none could see a face, a flash of lightning rent the air, and passing in a moment's space, the black knight was no longer there, and of his steed there was no trace. All looked at Lady Ursuli, who blushed with love like any bride. No power can take my soul from thee. I come, I come, she faintly cried, and swooned in arms held hastily, and smiling closed her eyes and died. But who the black knight was none knew. Though one said who had second sight, he watched a raven as it flew in circles slow and did alight upon the tourney ground and grew into a sable horse and knight. By some it is believed and said that Sir Varel gave one deep sigh and turned himself on his sick bed and muttered a low welcome cry, and ere the watchers knew was dead as his dear lady's soul passed by. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Golden Line by Edward Burrow Brownlow, read for LibriVox.org by Alan H. Staples, July 25th, 2017, in the United States of America. As each small ripple of the mighty sea reflects a tiny image of the sun, until in radiance joining one by one they do present a path of brilliancy. In this broad stripe of gold that comes to me from the horizon as though God has spun a thread of golden thought for me alone out of his universal mystery, so from the mirror of each human soul shall flash the radiance of God's great love, which ever shineth on us from above, until love's splendor lighteth up life's whole, and man shall look on man, and soul through soul behold one flaming line of truth, God's pure and shining gold. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sweet of My Life by Edward Burrow Brownlow Read for LibriVox.org by Alan H. Staples, August 1, 2017, in the United States of America. Love is to life as perfume to the rose, a sweet unseen enjoyment that doth lend rapture to beauty. So doth nature send the harmony of happiness that flows. Halfway between hot passions leaps and throws, and apathy, where worn-out feelings end, throughout the universe there doth attend upon all active ordering repose. O thou, the fair embodiment of good, who first within me struck the chord of love, necessity of life, in thee doth move the pure quintessence of pure womanhood. Without thy love my life would be as bare, as fairest rose without its perfume rare. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Hastings by Edward Burrow Brownlow Read for LibriVox.org 
by Alan H. Staples, August 1, 2017, in the United States of America. The Saxons fought hard in the fatal fray. O oh, sing of the battle on Hastings' shore, when the arrows of Normandy won the day. Flushed by debauch at the break of day, their keen-edged axes athirst for gore, the Saxons fought hard in the fatal fray. Proud soldiers fell down on their knees to pray, Lord, yield us the victory, we implore, when the arrows of Normandy won the day. King Harold, whose heart never felt dismay, spake loud of the deeds they had done before. The Saxons fought hard in the fatal fray. Typher the jongleur sang well his lay, and laughed as he flung up the lance he bore, when the arrows of Normandy won the day. Duke William in England proclaimed his sway. King Harold lay dead, the battle was o'er. The Saxons fought hard in the fatal fray, but the arrows of Normandy won the day. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Shelley by Edward Burrow Brownlow Read for LibriVox.org by Elizabeth Parsons A bird of song, far soaring to its home, Over the sea waves cleaves with tireless wing, the cloudless blue but swiftly gathering. A storm breaks up the crystal into foam that dashes mountain high against heaven's dome. Now darkened, down the aerial harpies fling, the sweet voice minstrel and sad surges sing, the dirge of death with sorrow burdensome. O heart of hearts, high beating o'er the world, from whom fell sweetest song that unto man told love and life since life and love began. Like some lone bird thou wert by nature hurled into the restless jaws of death's devouring sea with still a song of songs to bear thee company. And a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Morning by Edward Burrow Brownlow Read for LibriVox.org by Elizabeth Parsons The gray of dawn peeps up behind night's folds While darkling clouds yet dim the distant sky Long miles of mist disperse along the wolds And from the dewy boughs the songsters fly the feathered minstrels of the opening day, refreshed by long and undisturbed repose, arrange the plumes that night has turned astray, and all their ruffled beauties now disclose. The late lone bat, like some lost refugee, seeks dark security from pressing morn, and scatters as it hides in hollow tree bright butterflies that soon the scene adorn. The busy ants from their great hills descend in careful haste and cross the grassy plain, saluting silently each passing friend, but disregarding strangers with disdain. The lumbering beetle, lazy and begrimed, with laggard steps begins the dreary day. After the toiling snail hath long beslimed, his burden march upon the open way. Along its silken threads the spider walks and shakes the hanging dewdrop to the ground. No chance entanglement his duty box, as patiently he treads each subtle round. Forth from the little door of his domain, the gentle bee, armed with industrious powers, seeks treasure trove and soon returns again, weighed with the honey of a hundred flowers. Within the wood the dove begins to coo, telling with swelling breast his gentler mate how he has sought her presence but to sue, and all day long her love will supplicate. 
out of the root-roofed archway of yon beech, the natural portal of his spacious cell, the nut-brown squirrel doth his neck far reach, to spy if all is safe within the dell. The marigolds unfold their yellow heads, that vie in color with the saffron sun, the violets stretch within their scented beds, and raise their beauteous faces one by one. Along the meadow land the daisies pied, proclaim their presence to the pearl-laid grass, the morning glories in their prudish pride, ope wide their eyes to gaze in nature's glass. And whilst within the parsonage dull sleep still holds the inmates with mesmeric power, the martins one unending circle keep in morning service round the old church tower. The robin, rosy from his early bath, with quaint conceit which unto him belongs, hops uninvited down the garden path and breaks the silence with his tuneless songs, whereat the watchdog, rousing from his sloth, chases the bold invader far away, and careless though the chanticleer be wroth, with joyful bark proclaims the break of day. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Love's Voice by Edward Burrow Brownlow Read for LibriVox.org by Elizabeth Parsons As little streams that start to find the sea Proclaim with babbling tongues their voyaging And with proud riot make the meadows ring Or fill the wild woods with much noisy glee as of their course they tell each waving tree, And wandering bird that chances near to wing. So shallow lovers in the world's ear sing, Their plaint of passion with vain minstrelsy. But vast as restless ocean's deep expanse, Superbly splendid, solemnly sublime, whose music beats upon the shore of time. In rhythmic beauty is my heart's romance, but as no song can sound the mighty sea, my soul is silent in its love for thee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lilies and Poppies by Edward Burrow Brownlow Read for LibriVox.org by Elizabeth Parsons White lilies languish on their graceful stems. Red poppies laugh amid the growing corn. Lilies at poppies look with lofty scorn and cherish dear their own chaste diadems. Poppies at lilies scoff their scarlet gems, Blaze in the splendor of a life love-born, And love begetting and do most adorn, Those whom love's beauty unto death condemns. Lay the white blossoms on the lowly bier Of her who passed away so pure and young, Fling the red passion poison flowers among Her siren sisters who live sinning here. O oh, star-souled lily, white for none to blame. O oh, blood-stained poppy, red with blush of shame. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Bacchus by Edward Burrow Brownlow Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. The poet sings in lovesick verse, Plaints thy goblets soon disperse, Pluck the willow from his head, Twine the vine-leaf in its stead, Fill the bowl 
with drink divine give the wounded minstrel wine and the fool now fraught with pain ne'er shall weep for love again see it scarcely stains his lips yet to draughts have turned his sips subtle raptures swiftly fill every vein with fiery thrill long before its rage is o'er pants the reeling wrench for more squeeze the grape fill high the bowl wine shall cheer the wounded soul let the ruddy torrent flow heal all wounded hearts below freely let the red stream pour with its storm the blood shall roar surges of mad ecstasy shall embroil life's fantasy clouds of joy before the brain dull the deeper sense of pain love is great but in life's dream wine alone shall reign supreme to old bacchus drink and sing cupid's victor pleasure's king end of poem this recording is in the public domain Love Whispers by Edward Burrow Brownlow Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. I hear soft breathings in the gentle breeze. Through whence or how they spring I cannot tell. They whisper on the hill and in the dell, Along the streamlets and among the trees like the sweet humming of a thousand bees in harmony as if some magic spell fashioned the dew to music as it fell like merry mermaids chanting neath the seas or fairy chorus in a moonlit grove or band of nightingales each to its rose trilling of love when all things else repose such sweet sounds haunt me where so o'er i rove shaping themselves to words that sing to me happy art thou of men thy loved one loves but thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain work by edward burrow brownlow Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Work, use all thy will, give all thy might, ply all thy strength, until the golden dawn of early light shall change at length into deep purple shades, soft, pure, and bright, that bring glad tidings of the peaceful night. Work while the subtle seasons onward roll in certain course the ways of this frail world to help control that keen remorse in life's last moment ere thy deeds unroll may strike no sudden anguish to thy soul work taking lessons from the mighty past what men have done yet let not those old masters hold thee fast they have begun what later souls must finish they have cast the first stones at earth's evil not the last work but seek not false ambition's flame to light thee on not so the men of wisdom ever came in days long gone no sordid dream, no bare desire for fame, Has left on memory's lips one worthy name. Work, in the hope of sowing seedlings great, Let others reap, that, when stern nature's bid Thy step abate, thy body sleep, Thy soul shall tremble not at death's dark gate, but calm and sure shall meet its after fate. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
where bluebells nod by Edward Burrow Brownlow, read for LibriVox.org, by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Where bluebells nod beneath the trees, and violets scent the summer breeze, I love to lie the whole day long, and listen to the wild bird's song, while bees hum in their harmonies. Proud wealth can buy its days of ease, but not made up of hours like these. To none doth rank or fame belong, where bluebells nod. In vain the arts may strive to please, the sense with novel images. For me this sweet cool fern among, all nature's right, all art is wrong. Ah! leave me with my birds and bees where bluebells nod end of poem this recording is in the public domain loss and gain by edward burrow brownlow read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c since thou hast come the world and i have parted like chance met friends whom love has never chained away it spins mad-brained and merry-hearted while i count o'er what i have lost and gained my losses are the breath of idle greeting the siren song of pleasure folly's laugh wealth's patron's smile the pendant's wit most fleeting, and all that goes to make use epitaph. My gain is thee, who hath removed my blindness, torn off the mask of sin, stripped shame's disguise, shown me man's fragility, taught me gold's unkindness, and made a very heaven beneath the skies. So do I feel like one from dreams awaking, Who laughs at night and all its foolish making. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Trio by Edward Burrow Brownlow Read for LibriVox.org By Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver B.C. Founded on a well-known passage of Dante. 1. Do you remember, dear, the day we sat, and read together from an old love book, alone in that sweet, calm, sequestered nook, which nature made for souls to marvel at? Beneath us stretched a soft and shining mat, a velvet verdure leaves and blossoms shook as songsters all their melodies forsook to hear a legend from love's laureate we knew no fear for there was no one by the stream seemed in its ripple to repeat that tale of lancelot so sadly sweet who love enthralled in endless slavery Ah, me, there is no greater grief than when we feel the thought of happier days or present sorrows steal. 2. When from your lips the words fell on mine ear, full many a thought our souls together drew, in sympathy that with the story grew, still more intense, and oh, so wondrous near our eyes were dimmed by love all pitying tear and our cheeks the blushing color flew as if ashamed of its divulgent hue how well we understood the story dear the blue vault overhead bore not a cloud upon its surface on our sky of love not ere the shadow of a sigh did move where now the soul storm rages long and loud 
ah me there is no greater grief than when we feel the thought of happier days or present sorrow steal three but one sweet passage from the book you read the o'ergrown bud of love contrived to burst and all the beauty it had warmly nursed broke in our trembling hearts and blossomed youth's long-fought fire our unloosed fancies fed our souls felt love's unsatiable thirst oh happiest moment then but now the worst when life's blue sky grew all aflame with red but when you told how that long looked for smile was kissed by noble lancelot then then you kissed my quivering lips nor read again and bliss eternal breathed in us a while ah me there is no greater grief than when we feel the thought of happier days or present sorrows steal end of poem this recording is in the public domain Desenitute by Edward Burrow Brownlow, read for LibriVox.org, by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Ninety years forever fled, seem but ninety minutes past, as I, waiting for the last, live alone among the dead, musing in the gloom and glow. Lo, I see a ghostly train spectres conjured by the brain images of long ago from the soul rise strangled cries death groans from the sins it wrought from the mind spring buried thought poisoned hopes vain sympathies in a weird phantasmal band seen as though in life's eclipse perished women kiss my lips dead men take me by the hand infant figures glad with glee cluster in unbidden band clasp my old and palsied hand pulsing high with memory pass light fingers through my hair once like theirs all tangled gold silvery now and thin and old bleached with age and blanched with care softly touch my parchment skin laugh and touch again and ask that i throw aside time's mask dull with years and dark with sin lock into my dim dead eyes dimmer now with tears that start from the little left of heart that to those dear souls outflies crowds of spirit children pass faces lost long years ago buds soon buried in the snow playmates comrades in the class chide me for my childish tears bid me join the childish game call me by a childish name none have named for scores of years use high souled with aims that age neither blighted nor betrayed look with truth lit eyes that made noble life's short pilgrimage friends whose friendship now i crave hearts who love i yet would feel one by one before me steal in and out my living grave all things I have seen and known, read in book and dreamed in dream, stand as true as they did seem, when I claim them for my own. I have tried the truth of life, kissed love's lips till they grew cold, drained the cup and clutched the gold, mingled in the human strife, seen men come and go like leaves, 
through the falls of many years joined their laughter shared their tears in the plot the great god waves ninety years forward fled seems but ninety minutes past and i waiting for the last live alone among the dead end of poem this recording is in the public domain the coming of summer by edward burrow brownlow read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c grim winter rose and girded on his sword to battle with the world at each swift blow the wind hissed cold and at the sound abhorred birds ceased their singing and the rivers flow stayed in its course the sun's warm glow reached not the flowers through the air's dark frown the last leaves perished and the crystal snow paled the soft bosom of the earth so brown and all her pulsing life was frozen down within time's wondrous palace of past years nature sat grieving on her ancient throne her furrowed cheeks were wet with scalding tears and from her wrinkled mouth scaped many a moan for she was brooding on delights long flown when all was bright and happy and the land flourished in fruitfulness and there was known no sign of sorrow ere stern winter's hand gave right of spoil to all his ruthless band ah me she cried aloud in accents sad that ever son of time should work such woe and he of all the offspring i have had the eldest unto whom my love did go like streams that meadow margins overflow with rainy surfeit for the thirsty earth whom i had hoped from childhood would upgrow rich in high thought bold deed and noble worth and yet woe's curse fell on him from his birth in simple beauty spring knelt gently down kissed the sad tears from nature's careworn face smoothed from her thoughtful brow each troublous frown with tender hands that left of pain no trace then upstood in modest maiden grace saying behold mine hour hath come to me i go to make my love a resting place against his coming from beyond the sea a throne most fitting for his sovereignty so spring walked forth into the icy cold and as her first soft footfall touched the earth a joyous thrill on everything took hold and from the spot a snowdrop white had birth then a bold robin piped across the dearth of frozen land a loud defiant sound then winter knew his power was little worth and sped him forth to higher vantage ground with all his yelling rout fast flying round the birds set up a chorus of glad song watching their nests among the shady trees insects in quick innumerable throng made live the earth and air gold-laden bees scorned the fine butterflies that flew at ease among the blossom beauties of the fields the strong young leaves defied the assaulting breeze spreading the brightness of their verdant shields to guard the nursling fruit that autumn yields where the thin moonbeams cast their joys along 
a verdured veil of rapturous delight spring caught the echoes of the herald's song and saw the flowerets in the dead of night lift up their watchful faces glad and bright and heard the birds soft singing through the shade singing for summer and the morning light then sank her soul within her and afraid she watched the circuit that the fast moon made as death unseen poised high his vengeful dart and nature's knelt beside spring's fallen form night's outer curtain gan to wave and part before the sun's first breath so bright and warm the diamond dew to rainbows did transform the flowers raised up their heads to their full height the breeze bore on its wings a music storm as every bird sang forth in full delight and loudest strain the sightings of the night and spring revived a little moved her head and to her mother said in accents mild before he comes alas i may be dead o oh, hasten him mother for thy child and give him this i pluck it in the wild and tell him ere king dearth his mantle throws i would he kissed my lips and on me smiled o oh, haste thee mother's mine take this white rose and bid him come my dying eyes to close with her last word the golden door swung free a blaze of sunshine scattered all the gloom sweet music rolled in voluptuous sea the radiant air was filled with scent and bloom and summer stood the bravest hearted groom that ever bride had waited for and won but spring lay like an image on a tomb her too short pilgrimage already done her blue eyes closed her last breath begun and as her soul forsook its frail abode golden-haired summer with a cry of pain across the threshold of time's palace strode with tears that fell in showers like to rain calling on spring to come to life again but tears could not disturb her last repose and all the calling of his heart was vain summer still thinks of spring his grief he shows when golden raindrops fall upon the rose end of poem this recording is in the public domain rondell by Edward Burrow Brownlow, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. God's wisdom all my spirit fills with faith that puts to flight all doubt, the snow dissolving into rills, refreshing earth from last night's drought, adown the peeping slopes of hills, carve their increasing channels out. God's wisdom all my spirit fills, with faith that puts to flight all doubt. The day that stirs, the night that stills, spring's mask of flowers, rich summer's rout, each wonder far past finding out. With joy and love my bosom thrills, God's wisdom all my spirit fills, with faith that puts to flight all doubt. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Abbey Walls by Edward Burrow Brownlow Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. 
This was the abbey long years ago, when a priest was pious, a lord was brave, and a lady repeated her ave slow, with fair eyes fixed on the architrave, as she heard a sanctified voice that clave the clear bright air with a holy strain all have been lost in time's great wave only the old gray walls remain one arch still stands of all the row that circled the abbey so tall and brave these flags as legend would have us know all the very stones that used to pave the cloister walk when a proud margrave heard from his hiding a love talk plain which he never forgot and never forgave only the old gray walls remain here where the nettle and nightshade grow by a nameless stone is the quiet grave of a murdered priest they laid him low under the walk of the quiet knave tis whispered alas that a dagger gave a stab to the heart that brought no pain of all the story that time could save only the old gray stones remain envoy ballad to that dead lady go say love still sings its sad refrain of its lofty hope and sunny glow only its gray walls remain end of poem this recording is in the public domain the violet by edward burrow brownlow read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Born in the night and christened with the dew, the violet lifts its face for morning's kiss, and each fair petal, filled with nature's bliss, weaves from the sunshine a sweet robe of blue. The birds look down and wonder how it grew, for yesterday the leaves where now it is lay green in the grass and naught was like to this earth's earliest counterfeit of heaven's hue the shy heptica the showdrop white the trebly mounted trillium the blaze of golden daffodil with sunny rays have all arisen in their beauty bright but none of flora's firstborn can compare with this blue blossom darling of the air end of poem this recording is in the public domain la farfalla by edward burrow brownlow read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c Bright little butterfly, mounting at morning, Over love's garden of sweet delight, Heedless of harm and the honey-bee's warning, Bent upon pleasure in pain's despite, Gaily thou flutterest, gaudy flaunting, All thy fair charms to the winds that kiss, Like a soul in Elysian happiness haunting, New meadows of bliss. When the first gray beam of the dawn uplifting, Shadows of sleep from a world of dreams, From a sea marge to mountain and meadow land drifting, Lighted at last on thy wings bright gleams, Kiss thee and wait thee and whispered thee hasten, To herald the sun where it might not smite, in the deeps of dark dells where white flowers wasten and languish for light thou hast bathed in the sun flashing spray that arises from ripples that laugh on the brook's fair face 
thou hast gazed in the mirror that nature devises for beauty's delight in her own sweet grace thou hast basked in the heat of the noontide splendor when cricket piped high in the grass beneath and the blossoms that carried thy burden so tender were crowned with a wreath the lily grew pale for thou passed its perfection the violet bowed in a passion of grief the daisy had hope of thy gracious election the bluebell despaired of its heart's relief the hyacinth spread all its beauties before thee the marjoram blushed as it caught thine eye the mignonette flung its sweet fragrance over thee but thou passed them by light was thy heart and the pleasures thou scattered were pure as the flowers on which they fell till the red rose sought thee and caught thee and flattered with promise of love thou hast known too well all the long hours till the low sun glamoured the bright blushing petals to kiss and to toy thou paused in thy flight for thy heart enamoured drank deeply of joy the blossoms that drooped in the dark and were sighing for tidings of light thou wert bidden to tell lay down in despair dreading death and yet dying and great was the grief in deeps of the dell for thou hast forgotten the message of morning and the work of the day thou wast given to do for the love of the rose and the honey-bees scorning for thy love was true poor little butterfly dying so sadly at the rise of the moon or the ripe gold grain dost thou rue of the pleasure thou tastest so madly wouldst thou take back thy love to take life again ah oh, no love is sweeter and meeter than duty and shall hold thee in joy till thy last breath beats till thou liest at rest a dead marvel of beauty surrounded by sweets end of poem this recording is in the public domain cowper by edward burrow brownlow read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c a gentle stream purled on its peaceful way through woodlands fair and meadows wondrous sweet chancing at length a cavern dark to meet within whose depth ne'er fell the light of day lo as it entered heavenward flew the spray all loth to pass beyond and backward beat as though the natural course it would defeat that plunged it where the sun cast not a ray through that lone cave of blackness on it sped its happy music turned to mournful side until it reached the end when earth and sky shone doubly bright that seemed for so long dead thus didst thou pass sweet singer through the gloom of life's dark hollow light came at the tomb end of poem this recording is in the public domain rain by edward burrow brownlow read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c love only laughs when sunshine floods the air when winds flute summer music through the trees when nature's maskers are attired to please and flora holds gay gala everywhere but now heaven's brow is under knit with care 
low clouds burst forth a weeping flowery lees are drowned with runnels and the ponds grow seas leaves droop beneath the dripping loads they bear and silence reigns in each late lute filled bough the cricket chorus and the humming crowd that tell how labor lightens earth's hard way are all all gone love hears no music now only an endless falling sharp and loud the dreary rhythm of a rainy day end of poem this recording is in the public domain Him by Edward Burrow Brownlow, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. When the calm of night is falling, and the cares of day are o'er, hear the voice of Jesus calling, go to Him and sin no more. When the heart is sad and troubled, He alone can peace restore. By his love is life ennobled, go to him and sin no more. When the soul in grief and anguish mourns the evil done before, let your faith no longer languish, go to him and sin no more. Go to him, for he can only soothe the pain and heal the sore. All who are distressed and lonely Go to him and sin no more. Go to him, lay down your burden, at his feet his love implore. Ask in penance for pardon, go to him and sin no more. Go to him, he hath invited, all to enter heaven's door. Sinners by his love united, go to him and sin no more. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Great Play by Edward Burrow Brownlow. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. There is a playwright older than the years, who maketh all men actors in his play. And though they know not what they do or say, The purpose of the plot in all appears, Each in his turn beset with inborn fears, Enters unseen, use comedy so gay, Laughs through the hours that glide too soon away, Beneath the clouds of soul-consuming tears, then manhood's tragedy with perils fraught pursues its fickle fortunes to the end when fate the villain of the peace doth send by whom the last exciting scene is wrought a timely stab from death's sure failing knife brings down the curtain o'er the play of life end of poem this recording is in the public domain. End of Orpheus and the Other Poems by Edward Burrow Brownlow